Rise of Labor Unions by Amanda Stern. Fair pay, benefits, and workers' compensation weren't always commonplace. During the Industrial Revolution, many poor factory workers had to work long hours in difficult conditions for almost nothing. How are you holding up, John? It's not good, Ben. No one wants to hire a one-armed man. What are you going to do? We can't make rent. We're moving to the poor house next week. <laughs> this isn't right. If you hadn't been so tired and overworked, you wouldn't have fallen into that machine. There's nothing I can do about it. As soon as they let me go, there was another guy in my place five minutes later. I won't put up with our fat, lazy, greedy bosses any longer. Nathan, I think we need to get a union together. I don't know. It can be dangerous for unions, especially if we decide to protest. But there's power in numbers. The police can't throw everybody into jail. Do you really want to see what happened to John happen to someone else? Who will care for your family if you got hurt? You've got a point. Two weeks later. We won't work unless things change. Why should we work ourselves to death so the factory owners can make all the profit? We have families to feed. This is America. What about the women at the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory? I suggest you men get back. Why should we? We're holding a nonviolent protest. We're not breaking any law. We'll see how the judge feels about that. How can you arrest us? We've done nothing wrong. You're disturbing the peace. I've had it with you lazy protesters. Unfortunately, that is how some protests ended. The factory owners were scared of the power of unions, and police would arrest them. The